Welcome to Horror Movies with Friends. I'm your host, Andy Green, aka Wolf Mandy Scream, and this is day 10. We've made it to double digits of 31 different horror movies, 31 different friends and guests. This is one, this is the new one, yay! And uh, 31 different movies and drink pairings. This is the drink pairing we'll get to, but first, uh, I've been invited to someone's room against my will. Welcome. <laughs> it's my lair. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is Cat Pettibone's lair. Welcome. Uh, we got T-Swift, we got Buddy, and... It's a very teenage girl in here right now. Yes, and as we learned from Jennifer's Body, spoiler alert, that's the movie we're watching, Hell is a Teenage Girl. Yes. Yeah, yeah and you can speak from that, uh, from experience. I cannot. Um, but Teenage Boy wasn't great for me, but it wasn't, I guess it wasn't Hell. Um, yeah, Teenage Girl is definitely hell. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It Perfect. checks out. Yeah. I corroborated with my partner. She said, yes, that, that's, uh, that that's true. the truest that line. That is accurate. I think that's it's the truest line in the movie. It's probably the, not necessarily the thesis of the movie. I don't know, Megan Fox says, I am a god, and that actually might be the most <laughs> accurate line in the movie, because You're Megan right. Fox. <laughs> You're right, it is, is Megan Fox. Uh, we all worship her. This is, uh, and then, so we are, in case it wasn't, I was going to ask you, what movie are we watching? What was the only movie that you chose that we had to watch? Jennifer's Body. And that is 2009? 2009. A good year for all of us? I was a junior in high school? I was... Or no, sorry, junior in college. I was going to say, what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was in college too. I, mean, I miss those, those four years. They all blend together. I wish I was in high school. And That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's directed by Karen uh, Kusama, mm -hmm. and this is streaming on the Criterion channel, so you can get a free trial or find your cinephile friends like me that has it, but I actually don't have it. Um, but yeah, that's how I watched it. How did you watch it? Oh, actually, Amazon Prime. You can get it for free because it comes with IMDb TV, which is like you oh. with Amazon Prime. Yeah, so oh. you can watch it for free. This is why you're here. Look at that. Say. Wow. And uh, Kat, would you like something to drink? I'm actually okay. I'm not going to drink. Okay, and that's totally cool because not everyone drinks, and uh, I I want to normalize that. There's no pressure at all. There's no peer pressure here. Not at all. We're not 15. We're not. <laughs> we're not 15. Although we do act like it sometimes, and True. we probably will in the ensuing few minutes. <laughs> but I I will partake because this uh, I contacted the winemaker herself, Annette, and we talked on the phone a couple times back and forth, so I am excited to try the Bergevin Lane Vineyards uh, She Devil Syrah. This is a 2018 out of the Walla Walla Valley in Washington, my home state, so very excited. Um, that's such a perfect name for a wine for this movie. <laughs> that, that's why, yeah, I, I reached out when I saw that they had the She Devil, right. and, then, and then she was like, that's perfect, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Annette, this is for you. Uh, I'm going to imagine that we're having this drink together. But I, I, I'm happy to have it, you know, it's also okay to have a glass of wine while you're just... Uh, 100%, yeah. please, yeah. indulge. <laughs> indulge. I think that's maybe what this month is about in a little bit. That oh, seems looks like... delicious. I yeah, oh, I was that. actually supposed to... I gotta, gotta be... It's a, a different setting, as you know. Let's see if that's about where we're at. Ooh. Yeah, really nice. Here, you want to hold that, model it, um, or just inspect it. Maybe you'll have information on the back that you can make me look smarter. Sure. Um, so it's a very dark red, just like this movie. Let's let it aerate here. Um, so Kat, when did this, this movie found you in college, and, mm -hmm. and why is it one of your favorite films? Or I guess horror films, but maybe probably in general? In general, I would say it's one of my most favorite, um, but it's definitely like top three, maybe five horror for sure. Ooh, okay. I'm a big horror fan. Give, so. us, give us the five. Oh my gosh, that's like way. Scream is number one. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, you can't promise a top three or five and then not expect <laughs> I mean, to ask. I, I gotta process these things. <laughs> okay, Scream. Uh, Jennifer, uh, okay, this is in, Scream is number one, everything else is in no particular order. If I'm just doing three though, I'm gonna have to say. Nightmare on Elm Street, and I really like every iteration just because I think the whole entire idea of Freddy Krueger is just like so terrifying, and uh -huh. I just love it. Um, scares me every time. Um, I'm gonna go with yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street, Jennifer's Body, Scream, Scream Two is really good as well, and then I gotta go with Halloween because the 
almost the Wilson Michael Myers. Yeah. yeah. And and it's honestly, classic. for me, I just watch it for the music. I just watch it for Carpenter's theme. That's fair. Um, and that's all that it needs. Uh, this, by the way, I was having a sip while listening to your five. Yes. Um, it's really dry. It's really toothsome. Oh yeah. What 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 next? I'm a bartender, get? so I, I know a little bit about wine, even though oh, I don't really drink. Oh, well, please, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's very. God, I'm trying to get like. There's a little bit of leather, I would say, but it's not that. Uh, that sounds, but it's like, it's juicy. It's fruit forward at the same time, but not sweet at all. It's complex, and it, I feel like it's going to grow, and change as we have this conversation. Just like I hope. The two of us will grow and change. I hope so too. Um, here, I'll take well. that. Uh, I don't want you to dump it on me when I piss you off. Uh, <laughs> so Jennifer's body is not in my top five. Okay, tell me your top five. Oh no! I, Aha, I, see? I set this up. Oh no! Possession, Suspiria, the original. Um, ooh, uh, let's go with. I'm just saying ones that come to mind, and I don't even think they are probably in my top five. Oh, The Exorcist, The Shining, and the then Shining. and then I think I I feel like Nightmare on Elm Street is becoming that. I, I just watched for the second time, as you know, a couple of days ago, um, and and that I just I'm with you, like with Freddy and the franchise. It's so just brilliant. It's really well done. So so you're like kind of into the possession ghosts paranormal-ish a little bit more like I'm pure slasher almost that's interesting uh I, I want to I am I'm an equal opportunity it's like it's like in terms of the drinks you know it's like oh I, I want to try some wine I'll try some sake I'll try some coffee I'll have beer I'll have water you know whatever it is I think it's the same with horror I like to try different flavors I like nice. to I like to be scared in different ways I guess but okay. um but yeah the possession one is freaky uh that's a terrifying movie, by the way. Um, but I was going to ask you, so why pure slasher? Like, why? I mean, because those movies are definitely, for the most part, targeting women, even though I think they can be empowering in so right. doing. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I guess it depends on which ones. Like, you have Halloween and you have Scream, and those are films where they are targeting women, but also they're breaking the boundaries, I think, um, to some degree, especially Scream. But where you have these strong women who are fighting back. I mean, how many Halloween movies have we had where we, Lori is still alive? We're about to have another one, and Jamie she's Lee. still kicking ass. So um, I think there's something to be said for that. Also, I just think as far as being scared, so I love horror for two reasons. One, when it's really good and you're really terrified, that's fun. But also when it's really bad and it's really stupid, like let's say yes. Freddy vs. Jason, that is like the stupidest horror movie I've ever seen, but I love it. I would watch it a hundred times because it's so bad that it's good. It's funny. I'm not sure it's bad, to be honest. Ooh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> no, no, okay. I think it's good. <laughs> I don't know, but I was also stoned when I watched it. Okay, but that's it was, fair. But it was, I thought it was great. Yeah, it was actually a Halloween choice for last year. Yeah, so. but it, did it scare you though? No. Yeah, see, this, when I'm not scared, I like to at least, like, be having fun. And also, slasher movies scare me because they feel more, I mean, maybe not, like, Nightmare on Elm Street or anything, but they feel more possible. Like, they're very, like, especially something like Scream, like, in the serial killer genre. Like, yes. if I feel like something is a genuine threat to me, potentially, that's gonna, like, something's gonna go bump the night and I'm gonna be scared. If it's, like, an alien, I'm not really... Right, you're not as worried about aliens as you are about men. Correct. <laughs> and I think that's fair. Uh, yeah. We come here tonight to sacrifice the body of... What's your name again, Tiffany? You want to get scared of the horror movie. What about that? Why? Like, why do you want to be... Like, like you said, this is more possible. Like, men killing women. Why do you want to go right. there? Yeah, I mean, maybe I need therapy for this. I don't know. But there's just... Maybe that's what this is. Maybe, that's, maybe this is therapy. Um, I don't know. I just, like, I love Halloween. Like, not the movie, but the um, holiday. The idea. Yeah, the idea. The month. Um, and I love haunted houses. I love being terrified in haunted houses and, like, running for my life. <laughs> um, and I don't know, but, like, I know I'm not in any real danger. So it's a different... You know what I mean? Like, I'm not walking the streets of L.A. in the middle of the night by myself. That would be real danger. Right. You know? So I don't know what it is. Um, but no, it's I fun. Think, yeah, it's a, a safe way to experience one of the most 
uh, intense emotions, 100%. right? Yeah. And, and it's a cool emotion if you know you're safe. Like, to feel, it's a thrill. Like, that's why thrillers, it's in the fucking name. And I think that's a really nice, it's a cool place to be on the other side of, too, and be like, oh, and learning about yourself, what does scare you? And like even seeing a shadow across this I room just right saw now, that too. <laughs> I was just like, that's that's kind of weird. Yeah, like, and, and, and I thought he was gonna stop at the door. Uh, and I'm assuming it's a he because we always assume it's a he. Of course. Uh, probably but, was. But, <laughs> probably was. But in, in this movie, it's not necessarily a he. This is, uh, I, I wanted no. to watch it because it's gotten a, a lot of, I mean, not a second life. I think it was like always pretty popular. Uh, Right, but I think it's sort of grown in appreciation over the years, like, like a wine. Um, I would disagree. Oh, okay. Tell me, tell me. I remember oh, it please. very well when it first came out. I loved it, but um, it flopped hard, and so Diablo Cody wrote it. Right, uh, Juno. Uh, she yeah, was, she was coming off of Juno, and they were pretty much like, you can write whatever you want. And she's like, great. And she immediately was like, I just want to write a horror. And she she went into it wanting to write like a straight horror, but it ended up being like a horror comedy. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's just who she is. Yeah. And she had so many ideas and ideas that really come through in the film. But the way it was marketed was as this like sexy Meg, you're going to get this like naked Megan Fox slasher, gory, like, I don't know, um, raunchy film. How is he tasting? And it's not that at all. It's really meant for the female gaze, but it was marketed towards teenage boys. So it flopped hard and the reviews were abysmal. And then it kind of, in this era of Time's Up, Me Too, and, and kind of, you know, this like feminist wave, people have gone back to it and been like, oh wow, this is actually, and maybe us growing up too, um, understanding what the movie was actually trying to say and who it was for which is women. Okay. I think, I think it is, a lot of that is true. And well, I know, I know that history lesson is true. Yes. Like, and, and I appreciate that because I guess I have just sort of forgotten that. And I think, I think it was marketed to me. Cause I think I had that same thing of like, oh, cool. You know, Megan Fox is a babe. Uh, uh, and I think, and I think the movie itself is very aware of even maybe how it was going to be marketed in some ways because of how, it, it sort of dances around those scenes that you're sort of, uh, as a teenage boy, wanting to have or wanting to see, you know, because Megan Fox is, is very raunchy in this movie and her character is, uh, you know, sort of, uh, I mean, she plays with being the slut, right? That's sort of her character at the very beginning of the movie ish. I mean, just sexually voracious. I'm not saying she actually is one, but they're playing with that idea of her. They're playing with the idea that men want her and she uses that to her advantage but to get drinks she's That's still a virgin she's a virgin but she's not she she's, is a virgin she said she's not even a backdoor virgin she was lying because they wouldn't have killed her if she wasn't a virgin that was the whole thing they had they needed a virgin and they couldn't kill needy because needy had sex with her boyfriend it's kind of a flip the but, nerdier girl i use quotes please my gosh but um, cause uh, let's talk about Amanda Seyfried and how they tried to make her ugly. Come on, she's beautiful. Like, so silly. <laughs> Early aughts movies, putting glasses on hot girls and trying to make them ugly. But, um, well, yeah. putting bad dresses and bad hair helps too, but like, it's still but like... she's still so yeah, pretty, yeah, you know? Work, yeah. Um, but anyway, but yeah, so, yeah, the whole thing was that Jennifer is a virgin. But... I, no, I mean, then did I just see the whole movie wrong? Because I think... So. Well, no, because yeah. the first time... Needy's having sex is that scene that we see with her boyfriend. That seems like the first time they're ever having sex. That and might then, be true. And then the succubus thing only happens because she was killed and it went wrong because she wasn't a virgin. They thought she was a virgin. And because they thought she was a virgin, that's why they killed her because they believed Needy and they thought, oh, she's talking big game about sex. This person's clearly a virgin, but she was. Cause I mean, I don't think she's lying about the backdoor virgin thing and saying that she had to have peas and like have sex with Chris Pratt, basically. I think all that's real, and that the because because when they because when they went to the the library, the the occult section of the library, it's small. Our library has an occult section. Yeah, it's um it's really small. Uh, which was one of my that was one of my favorite lines. I I felt like they they actually uncovered that why she became a succubus is basically because the ritual was bastardized because they didn't they didn't kill a virgin. I'm pretty positive. 
demonic transference. It's something that happens when you try to sacrifice a virgin to Satan without using an actual virgin. But I don't know if that necessarily changes where I'm coming from in terms of the movie. Um, because like, cause that, that was a thing. And, and the, but it was more like, this is a, is it a feminist movie? That's my question. Yes. 100%. <laughs> okay. Because the movie is not about her killing men. She kills men, but this is a movie about the complexities of female friendship, especially in your teenage years, and how codependent and confusing they can be. And there's also a subtext of queer, yes. you know, a queer storyline that people definitely didn't get back then. I go both ways. But it's there. And um, I, yeah, that's what the movie's about. And that's why the guys in the movie... They're one note, like, they're nothing. They're un completely unimportant. They're they, mean, yeah. Yeah, they have absolutely... But the kills are not sexualized. I mean, she makes out with a couple guys, but that the actual... feels sexualized, I guess. I don't know. I mean, she's always drawing them in with sex, like, which is how the movie... We were drawn into the theater as, as men to be like, oh, we're going to see some sex. Jennifer's body. It's even in the title, right? You're looking at me like I'm crazy. Well, I mean, she doesn't have sex with any of them. No, 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 no. She no. just, but the, the actual act of killing, it's too, it's like way more campier than it is like sexual, uh, like slasher gore beyond her making out with the guys. Like she makes out with Chip a bunch or whatever. And then it's really just. And Corey. Yeah. It's just, it's Corey? Or is the guy, Colin? Colin? Or is it Colin? Colin. Yeah, Colin. 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 I love yeah. Colin. It's like the one good guy in the film. I'm like, that's the guy I don't want to date. Um, but <laughs> Poor, poor it, Colin. Yeah, I really felt for him when he died. Everyone else could go. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's, it, to me, like they're way more campy kills than they are actually like sexualized kills. And yeah, she is, that's a good point. She's luring them in with like her, but she knows what she's doing with that, obviously. Well, but, it's also um, for survival, right? As a succubus, she needs to feed to survive. It's sort of a vampiric correct. thing. Correct, and she's choosing to feed on boys instead of just anybody, because she could feed on anyone, technically. Right, but she chooses exactly. to feed on guys because... Guys are bad. Or we just don't need them, really, <laughs> is the point. It's not even that they're bad, they're just... I mean, some of the guys are bad. Let's talk. I mean, we can talk about that. But well, um, yeah, I mean, Adam Brody and the band is like what created yes. her, you know, um, and, and murdered her. Um, but and then the Jennifer's body, the whole title is like a play on like um, I have to. I would have to Google it. I forget what the actual story is, but it's it's a it's a play on some sort of old folklore or something. It's not. It wasn't meant to be like right. you're gonna see her body. But again, like it's a double entendre. Like yeah, there's yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah. I, I, so I definitely get that this movie is about toxic friendship. Like, that's to me what it's, it really is. And that Needy, I mean, even it's in the nickname of Needy, it's such a, like, like, and it seems like Jennifer is probably who gave her that nickname. And it's stuck. Everyone calls her Needy. And it's, like, not a very flattering For thing. Sure. And that she's not even, Jennifer's the one who's Needy in this movie. At, I agree. I am not insecure, needy. God, that's a joke. How can I ever be insecure? I was the snowflake queen. Yeah, like in terms of a friendship or like basically it's one, it's a one-way friendship, this this Agreed. thing. And she's a succubus even before she becomes one. That's, 100%. The, that's of course on purpose. And, and it, we see Amanda Seyfried sort of learn that, but it takes way too long for her to figure that out. But for me, I, I don't know how much the queer stuff lands because this movie's pretty homophobic. Uh, I mean, it's mostly in terms of guys or whatever, but no, even uh, there's like the, and I'm just gonna call her the Asian girl in the, in the assembly, basically uh, calls out Amanda Seyfried for sort of like wanting Jennifer. And it's not, uh, I mean, yes, maybe there's some sort of like, that's the point of that, but this movie has so much uh, problematic language throughout, yes. like that to me, I don't know how, yeah, like like the R word is used so oh, much. The in that. R word. So it, that stuff is aged quite poorly. And, and uh, so like to me, it feels like the homophobic language is also thrown in there so cavalierly and so even uh, bombastically, like at, for jokes too. Like it didn't feel necessarily like it was for, like, she, like Diablo Cody was satirizing that. I don't, that's how I read it. 
I, but I do think that, you know, Jennifer, the character, was using what seemed to me like Amanda Seyfried actually did sort of why she put up with this was that she was into Megan Fox a little bit. There was a couple of those things where, like, she wanted the hand, like, they wanted to hold hands. And I just, I think the, just the way she was around her, I think that was true, right? Is that how you read it, or? Yes. Um, I read it in the sense that, like, to me it's very clear that uh, Needy is in love with Jennifer, or mm -hmm. at least it is a part of her is in love with Jennifer. Yeah, I don't want to, yeah. Um, and that that definitely plays into this codependency and why her and she can't let go because she has these feelings for her. Um, I think they say like sandbox love never dies or something like that. Mm. Um, but to me, that queer story does read, and I see sort of it. A, it's a movie of the time, not, and I don't mean that in the way like it excuses it. I mean it in the way like that is how kids like talked. a lot of needy that is, but also like a lot of needy's issues. I think are come from back then, you know, and it still is hard now. But to come out was such a difficult thing because the like society and like the societal thoughts were like to shame people and to use this like cavalier language about like, right. you know, and that's just, it was just so difficult. So I think that that probably was like part of her mental and emotional thought process. And it was just kind of like her working through that. Um, but obviously she never really got to because her friend became a succubus, but, but then that's how it, it okay. reads to me. Even like their kiss, like their, their much anticipated kiss. I just remember like all the boys being so disappointed in it because they kept their clothes on. But I, I even feel like that kiss is meant for the female gaze because it's like very sensual and um, I don't know. I just remember like a lot of my guy friends were really upset because they thought it was just going to be this like really like, I mean, it is sexy, but like sexy in a different way, you know, oh, like yeah, in no, a more gratuitous way, but it's in like a very soft kind of, and it comes at a very interesting moment where these girls are really grappling with where they're at in their friendship. Um, well, it's like the last really, ditch thing, Yeah, right? it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, so... I think, well, and this actually, in a way, makes me understand a little bit the bookends of this movie, because to me, the like, when I'm watching it, I'm like, why do we have this in here? Because it tells us how the ending is. Like, we know where we're going, that Amanda Seyfried's going to be in uh, locked up in asylum, but the, in terms of the queer lines, it's like, that's what she, like, she's locked herself away, or been locked away, and then the end is her coming and accepting herself as queer and going out, and, and that, to me, I, I didn't, it didn't necessarily land when I watched it. it it's coming in now, but I, I also still am not sure how I feel about it, like, because, it, I mean... Well, A, it doesn't make sense. Like, she could have, just from a plot perspective, I'm watching and I'm like, wait, she could have just escaped immediately. But that's, again, probably, that's that's maybe the white dude in me being like, oh, you could easily escape the as asylum. You know, whatever, you can do, you can easily come out as gay. And that's not what I'm saying, because it's two different things, but that's what the metaphor is. Right. And then I'm, like, watching it being like, wait, she can fly and can just like break through? Why, why, why do we have this scene where she kicks someone and she's called the kicker? Like that's like, doesn't make, it seems like a waste of time. Uh, but I, now I, under, I, I understand what they're trying to do. Yeah. So it's like, it's interesting. It's a, I think it's a flawed movie, but I also like, it's still entertaining. Right. And still good. And I'm like, and, and you, and I, I wanna like, cause it is one of your favorites. Like you, it is empowering or like, who do you, like you feel for both of these women, right? I do. I wouldn't say it's empowering um, because, again, the killing of the men is like really the least important part of the film for me. So, I like, but she's a god. All the she is a god. <laughs> she is a god. Um, but I mean, the only really the only kill where I was like, yes, was I mean, obviously the last ones, and that's done by Needy. That's not even done by Jennifer. But it's like the ultimate revenge because the most by far the hardest scene to watch is the scene where jennifer dies and it's not because they're killing her it's because it's i mean it is like an allegory for sexual assault yes and it is so unbelievably heinous the way and i mean 
it just, I mean, just thinking about it now, like I'm getting chills, it's so uncomfortable to talk about um, because the way that they stop and they start singing that Jenny Eight, six, song. Seven, five, three, oh, nine. Yes. Jenny, I've got your number. I need to make you mine. But yeah, it's just so uncomfortable to see them laughing as they murder this poor girl who, I mean, and again, it's also representation of, you know, sexual assault, right, things like that. Right, well, it's, she was literally dragged into a van yeah, and given it's, alcohol. It's absolutely horrific. I would say it's, like, the only really scary moment of the film for me. Like, it's genuinely horrifying as a woman to watch that. Um, all, the, all the rest is just, like, can't be good fun. Um, so the end is empowering to see Needy come back and kill those guys, you know, because if anybody deserves Desert, to yeah. die in that movie, it's Adam Brody and his cronies. Right, and Adam Brody is perfectly cast because we all, yes. especially for 2009, he was, everyone our age was, like, wanted to be Adam Brody, like, that's... Or wanted to date Adam yeah, Brody. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yes. In high school, when I was watching The O.C., I'm like, oh... That's me. I'm Seth Cohen. And now when I watch that, he's like, oh, he's really annoying. I guess that was me. <laughs> uh, but, like, he's still charming. And that's what, like, yeah. he weaponizes the charm really well in this. And it's, like, why it's perfect casting. And he's also a musician. Right. Uh, His performance is fantastic. He does a great job of being a... A piece of shit? Uh, yeah. And, well, and, he, and he is funny. Like, there's a part of me that is, like... Yes, I am cringing, and there's this dread of this murder scene, but that they are singing this song as they do it, it's a joke to them. That's how, that's terrifying. Yes. Because it's literally a human sacrifice, but it's also, like, the absurdity of this movie in a way. And, it, like, it's just, that to me is actually, I think, the best scene. Uh, it's the one, yeah, I, I can yeah. see why I mean, it's, it's the a, hardest to watch, for you know, sure. It's hard to say it's, like, a great scene because something so horrific is happening, but, like, it is really like the most resonating scene i think especially like if you are a woman and you are really watching and understanding what's happening like it goes beyond camp in that moment and just becomes like just absolutely chilling um it's like so uncomfortable to watch and even really uncomfortable to talk about but um because you just think about yeah like reality um well, okay, let's go away from reality. Then. <laughs> yeah. I don't, but, want, uh, don't want you to be uncomfortable. No, 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 no. Um, I don't mean it like that. It's just, it's yikes, you know? But it's, I mean, it's it a really yikes. well written scene. And again, Adam Brody is like cast so perfectly for it. And their eyeliner is just so hilarious. It's so, the way everyone is dressed is like so of the time. It's, that part is really, really funny. Oh, yeah, they know um, all that. All the dudes are wearing eyeliner, uh, besides Chris Pratt, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and that was like the true Chris Pratt, like sort of yeah. conservative crazy. Chris Pratt. Um, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. I don't know. There's more here in terms of Jennifer's body, but I also, I, I don't know. I, I still find myself sort of like feeling like maybe we're putting stuff on it that it's not entirely earning, but I, I also like really appreciate that that is how you're feeling. And, 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 it, and also I'm watching it and enjoying it. So like that is no small thing right. for sure. And I think Megan Fox delivers an incredible performance. I think she's fantastic in this movie. So good. Yeah. She's so nuanced because she has to play so many different versions of that character. So I saw the that, 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 that. Um, From like... She's playing a version of herself, right? Because that's this is what everyone has made Megan Fox to be, this sex symbol. I mean, she, yeah. of course, wanted to be that. And some, not wanted, that's what Hollywood made her. Right. Right. But, sorry, continue. No, I'm. Just, you just see so many different shades. Like, if, when you meet her and she's still human, she's, like, confident and sexy, like, in a human way. But then when she becomes a succubus, she becomes confident and sexy in, like, this slightly more sinister way. And it's, like, so nuanced, I think. And then you also see a few moments of, like, true vulnerability from her character. Uh, whether it's like in her final conversations with Needy or in the scene where she gets murdered, you just like see this like terror and it just, um, she just does a really great job. I mean, she's just absolutely phenomenal in the film. Great. Yeah, it, like I feel like it sort of makes me want more, uh, more Megan Fox in the world. Absolutely, always more Megan Fox. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, did I piss you off sufficiently or did I say anything? I mean, I'm sure I said things wrong. That's great. Yes. Um, okay. You did. Yeah. <laughs> I said um, things wrong. Yeah. I think that, again, I think the movie is meant for the female gaze. And I think uh, men might not, even the most enlightened man to say, 
uh, I don't know if that's, I don't think that's me. Maybe <laughs> not uh, pick up on some of the nuances. And I don't think the movie is perfect by any means. Um, but I do think that it is saying a lot more than we give it credit for, or we used to give it credit for. Um, and I do think it is a feminist film, for sure. Okay. Hands down. Yeah. I, I, I guess I don't disagree, but I also think it's a mess. <laughs> that's that's, and, and I think, that's fair. God, we're annoying. You know, when we're teenagers. Yeah, um, and, and I'm probably annoying half the audience right now. So I think I will finish the rest of my She Devil Sarah in silence. Um, but I, uh, before I do, I just want to point out that, uh, you know, I'm doing this for a friend. Uh, it's actually his birthday today. And uh, I'm doing it for the Trevor Project as a fundraiser. It's what's making me get on the bed, the couch every day, and uh, having these conversations. And the Trevor Project is a nonprofit dedicated to helping LGBTQ plus youth. So there's more information below if you uh, can donate or spread the word. Uh, that would mean a lot to me. Um, but in the meantime, I will see you at the next phase of the moon. Tomorrow's movie, I believe, is the 1981 camp. Camp. I mean, it's a campy movie is what I was trying to say. It's a very, it's a werewolf movie. It's Teen Wolf four years before Teen Wolf. Full Moon High, uh, directed by Larry Cohen, uh, a horror uh, filmmaker with a lot of great credits that I'll talk about tomorrow. Kat, thank you so much for doing yes. this. Thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah. It's been thank, fun. Yeah. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks, thank Taylor. You. Couldn't have done it without T. Or Buddy. And, well, yeah, Buddy. Oh. Special guest. Yeah. I hope. He's enthralled, as you can see. <laughs> He's jittering. I can't, I hope it's dream. Not nerves, but it might be both. Could be both. Yeah. It's but a very, we had a very nerve wracking conversation. Um, but hey, tomorrow I will see you later. And until then, let's howl at the moon for the friends we miss, the friends we wish were here to see this.